Okay. We oh, are I had a dive bomb earlier. recording. What is radioactive decay? Radioactive decay. It's the process where the nucleus of an unstable atom, it's going to spontaneously disintegrate. So it's going to release um, energy and matter, which allows it to become stable. So it releases energy and matter to the point it becomes stable. So energy, we're, that could be in the form of heat or electricity or anything like that. Matter literally means parts of the nucleus. So probably neutrons or protons. Incidentally, I just saw a joke that was, uh, it's two atoms talking to each other. And one of, one of them goes, it's a joke. It says, I lost an electron. And the other one said, are you positive? <laughs> Thank you, Jairus. All right. So the first time we documented any radioactive decay was actually all the way back in 1896. Oh, that's a long time ago. George, that's like lost two years after I was born. That is, uh, what is it, 125 years ago? Uh, I would have to do the math, but I'm sure. 125 years ago, Henri Becquerel, and I am probably butchering that name, he noticed that a uranium sample left an image on a photographic film. Right? So that uranium broke down. Mask up! <laughs> This was that image. What is that image? It looks like lead. That was a piece of, so it's photographic oh, film, and a piece of uranium was left on it. And that was how he know the first observation of radioactive decay. Suit on when he was dealing with that? No, they didn't know about any of this type of stuff. Oh, this is back in the same cancer. idea as like x-rays and Marie Curie dying of cancer from he working with x-rays. And uh, plutonium, at least what she worked with. So what did this do? Well, it was kind of cool, right? So they started researching this decay process in the nucleus of atoms. Eventually, this led us to x-ray machines. Has anybody in here not had an x-ray? I've had an x-ray. You've never had an x-ray? I love x-rays. Like Congratulations. I you. You're not as accident prone as me, then. I've had so many x-rays. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -oh. I've uh, I've broken bones and I've screwed up joints and then also for um, I, was I have to get an x-ray of my lungs to prove I don't have tuberculosis because the skin test I I don't know if I'm allergic to it or whatever I react to it now so every five years they have to take an x-ray of my lungs I get x-rays all the time because I'm so accident prone especially in sports <laughs> yeah like I think it was my freshman year basketball season I fell and my whole wrist was like out to here and so we got to go for it to go to the ER and the lady thought I just had a deformed wrist. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah. I had to get right. x-rays for my hips so fresh from you because I had to get yeah, Make sure you didn't have dysplasia? Oh, yeah, I would do it. Yeah? I'd get I'd get an an x -ray my yeah, so x-rays, CT scans, anybody had a CT scan? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. That's like, what is that? Answer, right? What is that? What it's is like that? you lay this machine like... That. So have you heard of an MRI? I did when I had a Oh, yes. Okay, right. so... MRIs and CT scans, they work similarly, but an MRI works with a giant magnet, and a CT works with a giant x-ray machine. Do you get those when you have the concussion? Yeah, sometimes they will. Um, it, they can do either one. They can, they can do either one, because they're looking for swelling, and either one, those will show up on either one. MRIs are more, a little more detailed, usually. You see, look for those with the, when you're looking for, like... Torn. vessels or tears and things like that. If you're just looking for swelling, usually either one works. Um, nuclear power plants also run, um, or this discovery also led us to nuclear power plants. Um, so here's what happens. You have your parent atom. That's the unstable atom. That's the awesome That's, so the parent will break off. Just one other question. Please. Yes. I missed the last, the last line. Which nuclear one? Power. Nuclear power. So there are three types of decay, most of which I cannot show you in, in here. Like, they do exist, but... So alpha decay is the one we're going to start with. And you have a parent atom. It splits off an alpha particle. An alpha particle, you can see here, it has two protons and two neutrons. That'll split off, and then you have the daughter atom left. 
So how do we know what the daughter atom's going to be? No, no, protons. The protons, yeah. So you figure out where on the periodic table your parent atom is. Move two back, that's what the daughter atom will be. Mm -hmm. All alpha decay works this way. What about hydrogen? Hydrogen does not exist. It's not radioactive. So it will not undergo alpha decay. We're looking at ones further down the periodic table. So what is that two protons, two neutrons? That alpha particle? Yeah. It's a helium nucleus. It's not the whole helium atom because it doesn't have any electrons. Yeah. So without the electrons, you just have the helium yeah. nucleus, but we call it an alpha particle because it doesn't have the electrons. There is beta and there is gamma. Yes. So we talked about this already, determining. So if we want to determine the daughter atom's atomic mass, because it's two protons, two neutrons, each proton and each neutron is worth one atomic unit, you find the atomic mass of that unit, or sorry, of that parent, subtract four. That's going to be the mass of that daughter, um, that daughter atom. By the way, I'm going to get you guys all periodic tables yeah. for when we finish this. I just... Do we have to take a test? Do we have to memorize the entire thing? Yeah, we have to do that in ag and that was... The periodic way. table? No, just, so, just for reference. Oh I'm going to get God. you guys a periodic table for reference. Team. That was so annoying. I will not make you memorize it. There are a few I would expect you to memorize. Hydrogen is one. Uh, like helium. H. Probably, H. probably carbon and oxygen. Number twenty. Carbon is six. Oxygen is eight. Is twenty nitrogen? nitrogen. Nah, I don't know. I haven't taught chemistry in five years. Four years. Okay, so take a look at this general equation. We have whichever particle we start with, our parent particle. Okay. Then we take the atomic mass and subtract four. That will be our new mass. Take our atomic number and subtract two. That's the new atomic number of whatever our daughter particle is. So here we have our parent atom. Then we have our daughter atom, and again, we released a helium atom. So it is a type of helium. It's not really a stable one. It will most likely pull electrons from the environment, that, that alpha particle, and that. There you go, yep. So we will practice a few of these, and we're going to skip practicing for the moment because I'll, put, I'll display a periodic table, we'll, and we'll come back and practice these, but I don't want those at home waiting. What? Uh, you're making a mess is what you're showing yeah. you're trying me. Okay, beta decay is the last thing we're going to talk about today in class. Then you get to... Yeah, then we'll go back and do those practice problems. Okay, so beta decay. Positron. Yeah. So there are three types of beta decay. All of them will emit a beta particle. That is either an electron or a positron. We'll talk about what a positron is here in a minute. But we have beta negative, beta positive, and electron capture. And we'll probably not go through all of these yet. We might just start with beta negative. Beta negative decay, the parent atom emits an electron from the nucleus. So how does that work? Do we get an electron from the nucleus? Because okay. we've talked about the electrons are out in the orbitals, right? Mm -hmm. So why? how do we lose an electron out of the nucleus? It runs away. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into that. Um, okay. So uh, when we... Um, maybe... So, going back to my joke. Going back to my joke. We're comfortable that if we lose an electron from one of the orbits, the whole atom becomes positive, right? 
because we now don't have we now have one more proton than electron. But if the atomic nucleus contains too many neutrons, it has a strong nuclear force. This is stronger than the electrostatic force, which we're going to learn about in the next unit. Right? But the electrostatic force is pulling the electrons away from the nucleus. When you get too many nu neutrons in the nucleus, the, uh, the force pulling electrons towards the nucleus becomes stronger. And so it's going to actually pull the electrons in towards the nucleus. So how do they fix this? A neutron is going to spontaneously decay. It literally, yep, it literally spit, splits a neutron into a proton and an electron. So we now have a proton plus an electron in the nucleus, the, which has no business being there, right? Yeah. So that electron will then take off. That proton stays in the nucleus, which means our we actually went up in the periodic table. So we went from like a 4 to a 5. Okay. More likely a 51 to a 52. So but. I'm just saying that so, so one of the particles of the gas could in here could be just turning into a different gas. No. gas. Not usually. It doesn't usually happen with gases. It's usually solids. Radioactive materials are all much lower on the periodic table. Mm -hmm. So helium was what was created by the radio. He, the helium in itself in the alpha decay was not radioactive. It was formed from a radioactive element or radioactive atom. So that proton is going to stay in the nucleus, but the electron gets shot out of the nucleus. So a beta particle is simply an electron where an alpha particle was a helium ion, or helium isotope. <laughs> so here's what that rule looks like. Our atomic mass stays the same because we're turning a neutron with a mass of one into a proton, which still has a mass of one. We're taking it such a small piece off, we don't count the difference. Z is the number of protons, which is also the atomic number, so we've added one to that. And we've split an electron off of this uh, atom. And I think, yep, that's where we're going to stop for today. So those of you at home, Wait. Google a periodic table and we'll fill these out. We're going to talk about beta. I hope there's people home. at home. Okay. Uh, I'll have to look. Strong nuclear force. No, that's the bottom one. The top one from the nucleus. Okay. All right, so those of you at home, Google a periodic table and do the try these under beta decay and alpha decay, under beta negative decay. And I will talk to you guys later.